Hey everybody, so it's time for another currently reading video. I am reading four fantastic books right now that I cannot wait to tell you all about, and I hope I make your TBR explode. So let's get started. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're safe, and of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four, like I am. Um, it is just busy, as always. Work is keeping me up, but reading has been going very, very well, so I cannot complain. And I have so many books that I want to read, so I need to keep reading so that I can get them done. Are you having a good reading year? Tell me in the comments below. What is your favorite book that you've read so far this year? And what are you excited to read before the year is over? Let's talk about it. Um, as always, please get out your good pen, your paper, your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR, because I'm about to make it explode. And if you are so able, get these books from your local independent bookstore, or if you're a library user, get your library copy as soon as possible. Um, three, three of the four books that I'm going to tell you about are out already, so we're going to talk about them first, and then we'll talk about one that's coming out later this year. The first book I am actually just finished uh, before I made this video, but I'm, I'm including it, um, is Countries of Origin by Javier Fuentes. This is out from Pantheon Books. Um, this is the story of a young man in New York City. He moved to the U.S. when he was 16 from Spain um, because his mother was ill to live with his uncle. At the start of the book, we find him as an adult. He is a pastry chef at a very fancy restaurant, and the, ma the head chef has said that it is time for him to move on in some way and offers to pay for him to go to, uh, to um, pastry school. I want to say culinary school, but I'm not sure. Dessert school. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, however, we find out that um, he is undocumented and does not have um, a real social security number. He uses one that is fake. And they go to an immigration lawyer and basically tell, he's told there's no hope, right? There's no way that he's going to be able to stay if he tries to go through the legal system. Um, what winds up happening is he just, he gets offered to interview and gets a job at the Four Seasons as the head pastry chef. But when he applies, he uses the social security number he's been using for a long time and um, something comes up. So he has to, he voluntarily leaves the U.S. to return to Spain uh, for 10 years. He has to be gone for 10 years before he can return. He gets on the plane. He is dejected. He's leaving everything that he's ever known to return to a country that everyone calls his home, but he does not have a sense of home there. Um, on the plane, he sits next to a young man, um, and the sparks sort of fly, and Jacobo is a college student from Madrid who is returning home. We find out he is from a very, very wealthy family, and our main character... Um, Demetrio, um, and when the uh, audiobook author says all of their names, it's way more beautiful than the way I'm saying it. Um, but Demetrio gets ill on the plane, and Hokobo winds up taking him home, and we find out that Hokobo's family is very wealthy. His father is in a high position. His mother is an aristocrat. And basically, it becomes a story of his relationship not only with this family, but his relationship with a new home that he never knew before. And um, it's sort of like a love letter to Madrid in a lot of ways. There's a lot of talking about the beauty of the country and they travel around a lot. Um, it is a story about these two boys trying to think, I say boys, they're men, uh, two men, they're just way younger than I am, two men trying to figure out what their relationship is. It's difficult. It gets uh, very um, rough and ragged at times times um, and the struggle between that. And then it's also the story of the main character trying to figure out what he wants to do. You know, he has connections in restaurants here. He sort of gets back into it. But does he want his life to be the same as his life was in New York? Or does he want something different now that he's in Madrid? Um, and lots of stuff happened. I thought it was beautifully written. I thought it was complex. Um, I, it, I don't know a lot about Madrid. Um, so I thought it was very nice to sort of like almost being taken on a tour of the country.
I'm sorry, of the city. I know Madrid is not a country. Please don't come for me in the comments, which some people will do. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed that. The book stays above sort of going too deep into what's going on in Spain and keeps it very much about these families and these relationships and food and all of that. And I love this cover so much because it's this sense of isolation uh, that our main character, uh, Demetrio, is facing um, that sort of, where is he going? He's sort of lost. Um, I thought it was beautiful and I absolutely love, love, loved it. So that's Countries of Origin by Javier Fuentes out from Pantheon Books. Okay, the next book that I'm reading so I'm reading two um, literary fictions, one fantasy and one short story collection. Um, and I had gotten this book and I had it on my shelf. And then the author said on Twitter, I hope you read my book soon. So I picked it up. So Nathan, I heard you. And I picked up Forgiving Imelda Marcos by Nathan Go. This is out from FSG. Um, and you can get your hands on it right now. Um, I don't know what to think about this book so far. I will say that the plot is we have a father writing a a letter to his son. The father still lives in the Philippines, um, and the son and the mother have moved to the U.S. Um, there's some family drama going on between them, but the father is ill in hospital, and his son is a, um, a newspaper, a, a newspaper man, a reporter, and he wants to tell his son a story that he says he has told no one else. It turns out that the father um, begins writing letters to his son. And in these letters, we learn um, not only what the story is that the father wants to tell, but also about his history and his family and his upbringing and a lot of stuff. So the main character, the, the father works for a, a family. I want to say it's the Aquinos, and I apologize. Um, uh, yes, Aquino, um, the Aquinos, and the Aquinos um, were very much um, part of the downfall of Amelda Marcos and her husband. I have been learning a ton about Filipino history from reading this book. Every time I read something, I go and then I go read an article or Wikipedia to get some history. But we know who Amelda Marcos is. She sort of has this um, pop, uh, what pop culture sort of. Um, uh, identity for a lot of us. However, she and her husband were not great people. I'm just going to put it there. They stole a lot, a lot of money from the Filipino people. And, um, and the woman that um, Lito, the father, works for is the woman who became the president after the Marcoses, or is based on that character. And we learn about a secret meeting that is going to go down, and he's going to tell this story to his son. And it's a, these letters that just sort of tell the family history, and also tell the history of the Philippines in a lot of ways. And you learn a lot. I am learning a lot. I will say the there are some interesting vocabulary choices. The one that sticks out in my head that I cannot get over, that I have thought about a hundred thousand times, is that the father uses the word persnickety. I don't know anyone who has used the word persnickety. Um, and for me, it is just one of those things like now, every time I see a word that just in my brain, I'm like, what? Um, it sort of throws me off. But I am really enjoying this tale of this father who's really trying to make up something. I'm hoping we'll learn more about it to his son. And um, also learning a lot about the the, the country of the Philippines and Filipino history. I'm I'm enjoying it very very much. Um, I'm just the, some of the vocabulary is just I'm like huh what huh. So Nathan, thank you for inspiring me to uh, pick up your book. I am enjoying it. I want people to read it. If I don't think I've ever read a book set in the Philippines before, so that is if you are like me and you need to fix that, please pick up Forgiving Imelda Marcos out from FSG by Nathan Go. Hopefully. Um, I can't wait to see where that one ends. Okay, so I am also reading a chunkster of a fantasy novel right now. Um, Orbit sends me so many amazing series. And what I love about them is if I say, oh, that sounds good, but it's part of a series, they send me the whole series. So Orbit, I am so thankful to you. So thankful. But I just picked up The Bladed Faith by David Dalg Dal Dalglish. Douglas? Um, I'm sorry, David, I'm destroying your last name. This is book one in a series. I think three books are out now, three or four. And 
I am devouring it. I am 200 and something pages into this book. I don't even know. Um, am I over 300 now? Um, I am over 300 pages in this book and I am tearing along. So this is a, this, so the setting is an island nation that is conquered very, very early by an empire that is trying to conquer the whole world. Um, the main character is Cyrus and Cyrus is the prince of the country um, who watches his family and the island's gods get murdered and destroyed. And this empire is trying to just demolish the culture, the history, the faith of this island country. Um, Cyrus is thought to be dead. He winds up escaping and becomes part of a group of rebels. And he is trained to be the vigilante. Um, I think it's called the vigilante. You know when you have that well, wording? No, vagrant. Vagrant, I believe, is what they call him. Um, but he is a vigilante. Um, and he is trained and trained and trained. And they are going to take down the empire. Um, the book is so good at flipping between different characters to give different perspectives. The band of rebels, there is a um, young woman from a culture that's already been destroyed by the Empire who is like a kick-butt, axe-wielding monster when it comes to being the best warrior. We have a young woman who can share her body with the spirits of gods, and she does that for one of the gods that has been killed. We have a paladin of the other goddess of the island nation who is there, and we have just met, by the way, we have just met a paladin who is, are like the soldiers of the empire who has defected and become a heretic. And they come together and they want to destroy the empire on the island and take their island back. Um, it, it has a lot of battle scenes in it, I will say. I find it very, very engaging. I love the world building. Simple enough that I'm not lost. You know when it comes to my fantasy. World building gets too complicated. I'm out. I'm out. Um, but... I have not had that problem with this book. I am totally bought in. I want to know what happens. I know one of my favorite characters. I mean, he has, right? David has to kill one of them off. That just would add to the drama of it all. And I am dreading it so, so much um, because I am really engaged with this whole group of um, rebels. And, oh, I didn't even say there's like one leader one who's sort of funding the whole thing. He's like this taskmaster with a heart. I don't know. It's so good, y'all. Uh, I can't wait to finish it and see where this all goes. So that's The Bladed Faith by David Dalgish, and this is out from Orbit, and it's part of a series, and you can get your hands on it now. Okay, last but not least is the book that I'm the least far in, and that is Wednesday's Child by Yi Yun Li, out from FSG in September, September 5th, 2023. It is a collection of short stories. Um, Li is one of those authors I feel like everyone who's an author reads and loves. Um, her book, The Book of Goose, um, won the Tournament of Book ward um and i've heard no, i've only read one of her other books i think i have a lot of her stuff on my shelves um and after reading the first story in wednesday's child which is the wednesday's child i'm like this woman writes beautifully um i'm gonna just say what the back says it says it's a collection about age about loss alienation aging and strangeness of contemporary life and I will, the first story and the, I started the second one are both about mothers. And the first story, Wednesday's Child, is about a mother who's lost a child and is traveling and sort of unable to, her train in Belgium keeps getting delayed. And um, we, we learn about sort of her loss and why she's on this trip and all of that stuff. Beautiful, beautiful writing. Highly recommend so far. Um, one story in, and I just am blown away. So that's Wednesday's Child by Yi Yun Li, out from FSG on September 5th, 2023. Okay, let's see if I can hold this up. Last video, I dropped everything everywhere. So there you go. Those are the four books that I'm reading right now. Country of Origins, Forgiving Imelda Marcos, Blade, The Bladed Faith, and Wednesday's Child. I hope that all of them, all of them, I know not everyone reads fantasy, but at least three of the four wind up on your TBR. As always, or if you're a return subscriber, I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you subscribe and come along for more bookish content. And until next time, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, happy reading. Bye, everybody.